This is Rwanda. This is Rwanda. This is Rwanda. Cesa de Rwanda. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Rwanda Television. It's been now a year and a half since Rwanda, through um, RDB or the Rwanda Development Board, uh, signed um, a deal with uh, the North London Club, I mean uh, Arsenal Football Club, and uh, so much has been said about this deal. And uh, today, RDB is pleased uh, to announce another deal with uh, another club but is this new deal still in London or elsewhere in Europe or elsewhere in the world there is no one else to tell this in clear words rather than Claire Kamanzi who is uh, the CEO of uh, the Rwanda Development Board Claire welcome on Rwanda TV thank you we are just pleased to welcome you um, here. And uh, Claire, uh, it's been now a year and a half, I was saying. Um, today, uh, we are just hearing here and there um, rumors, something great is coming from RDB, a new deal. Can you tell us a little bit about this new deal uh, that is um, on the table? So uh, the Rwanda Development Board is very pleased to announce a new partnership uh, between Visit Rwanda Brand and a new football club uh, in our partnership called PSG in France. Uh, this is a partnership that is going to involve um, you know, advertising Visit Rwanda Brand within the stadium of uh, Parc de Prince in Paris, but also in addition to that, a lot of um, partnerships in the industri industries that we're going to be elaborating, but it's a new partnership with a very vibrant and young uh, football club that we are very pleased to be part of. Now, uh, with uh, the um, previous deal uh, with Arsenal, uh, we could see the Visit Rwanda brand on the um, Arsenal Football Club uh, shirts, um, on the uh, sleeves. Um, what about this new um, uh, deal with the PSG, maybe the difference between the two in, in, in clear words? Mm. So for PSG, you will see Visit Rwanda advertised at the stadium. You will see Visit Rwanda all over the stadium. You will see Visit Rwanda on the training kits of the players. You will also see Visit Rwanda on the, the, the jerseys of the women, the women shirts. Uh, so that is the partnership we have. But apart from those branding opportunities, including the backdrop uh, that uh, for interviews, you know, after a game, that you will see Visit Rwanda there as well. You will not see Visit Rwanda on the sleeve during the matches, but you'll see a lot more of this brand elsewhere. But what I find really exciting uh, about PSG, in addition to you know, advertising within uh, the stadium and also uh, the different platforms, whether it's social media, among others, is that we're actually going to be using this platform not just to promote football or, or tourism. It's actually a platform through which we're going to be promoting the different industries of Rwanda. We have plans to showcase our culture, to showcase our creative industry, our artists, our fashion designers. We are going to partner with PSG to promote all of this using their different platforms. You all know PSG is a very uh, big brand. They're very big on lifestyle, on culture, on music, entertainment. And so we're going to be tapping into you know, that lifestyle big brand of theirs to bring Rwanda along. So basically, uh, industries of Rwanda, whether you're a, you know, a business person in fashion, whether you're a business person in, um, in coffee and tea, which is also really important because from the next season, we're going to exclusively supply Rwanda's coffee and tea at the stadium, which is really going to promote our you know, exports of tea and tourism. So it's beyond advertising you know, around the stadium or beyond tourism. It's really promoting Rwanda's uh, creative industry and other agricultural industries like coffee and tea to the world. Yeah, of course, uh, previously you have uh, explained uh, the reasons of uh, signing a deal with Arsenal. Now, uh, one would ask, why Paris Saint-Germain today, not another club? I think that uh, <laughs> PSG shares a lot of values with Rwanda. If you look at this club, it's quite young, you know, but a very vibrant, upcoming 
a European club, fastest growing, one of the most popular today. It's um, very big on, on, on appealing to the young population, which is really uh, what Rwanda invests in as well. Uh, it also has a very um, clear in, you know, strategy to appeal and to pursue excellence. So from you know, being a, a, an appealing uh, football club to young people, but also a lifestyle brand, very much with what we're trying to promote. So we chose PSG because we saw that it's growing, it's dynamic, it's vibrant, it's an excellent football club, and partnering with Rwanda is a really big platform for us. Uh, speaking of uh, PSG, you mean uh, Paris and uh, you mean France uh, as a country. We all know that uh, uh, the relations between the two countries, uh, I mean, have been bumpy uh, over the years. Now, one would say, is this also a sign of uh, maybe um, harmonization of uh, the relations between the two countries? Well, um, today, Rwanda and France enjoy warm and cordial relations. That's very clear. And today, we have many French investors looking at investing in Rwanda. I think one clear example is uh, Group Borelli, that is in two logistics, but also more recently, they are investing in a Kigali cultural village in Rivero. And, and that's one example of the French business people that are coming and interested in Rwanda. So we have a good and warm relationship with, uh, with France. But I must say that the decision to invest in PSG was really very much based on what the club had to offer, the values the, the club carried, and whether those values, uh, we shared them. And I can say that uh, on that front, we, are, we were very pleased about picking PSG as a partner. Yeah, speaking uh, of PSG as well, we know that uh, one of the biggest um, investors with this club we have um, uh, Qatar as a country. The country has invested a lot of money in the, in the club. And uh, we uh, all know uh, the warm relations between Rwanda and Qatar today. Uh, the two countries are enjoying uh, uh, warm relations. Now, one would say, um, does that have something to do with uh, the, the, the deal with the PSG? knowing the club is owned by Qatar? Well, uh, again, uh, between Rwanda and Qatar, we also enjoy very warm and friendly, friendly bilateral relations. And we have um, you know, have very good, you know, different aspects we're working on together with Qatar. But again, PSG as a club on its own was appealing. Uh, and so we were able to look at the club, um, look at what they do, look at their potential look at their outlook, look at their global appeal, and all of those just check the boxes for us, which is why we chose to partner with PSG. When you signed the, the, the deal with the Arsenal, again, it was more of uh, boosting the, 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 the tourism industry in Rwanda, but this time we, it's, more, it's beyond tourism, it's more of uh, other sectors. Now, um, speaking of the tourism industry, um, one year and a half, what are the, some of the benefits, tangible benefits, uh, from the deal with Arsenal? Okay, so first of all, it's uh, just a year and a half since we signed with Arsenal. Yeah. And so um, it's uh, that period that we've been able to see the impact in two different aspects. One is uh, awareness, brand awareness. Today, Visit Rwanda is a very well-known brand. And it is very clear that the partnership with Arsenal is what elevated that brand that people today you know, make their own products and they want to put Visit Rwanda. It's become a brand that people are very happy to associate with, whether they're Rwandans or non-Rwandans. So that part of brand awareness, extremely successful. And I think you can also see that from the attention that the world had on Visit Rwanda when we, we started with, with Arsenal. Today you have um, you know, all the key media houses, whether it's Financial Times, whether it's uh, New York Times, um, you know, CNN, um, and uh, you, British newspapers all writing about how Rwanda is such a good place to come and visit. But I believe that this partnership played a big role in bringing Visit Rwanda to the minds of um, the people who write about travel, but also those who travel. Again, if you look at the, the social media outreach that we had, we were able to access millions and millions of viewers just by you know, being a partner with the Arsenal. We also saw um, the type of uh, searches on Google increased dramatically and all of them searching about travel, which is a positive thing to search about, as opposed to, to the history that Rwanda had, which was a very common 
um, you know, such uh, subject that you found on Google. So in terms of brand awareness, excellent uh, feedback, excellent impact, excellent outreach. We're very happy about that. Now, that is the other, about, uh, about the, the brand. The brand. The second part now is the impact on tourism. Yeah. Yes. In 2018, which was the first year of us, uh, that's when we launched the partnership, Rwanda had 1.7 million tourists. We had a 6% increase within the, the, the bracket for UK visitors. That's already a good sign of um, tourism growing. 1.7 million is a really big number of tourists coming to the country. But what we expect to see in the next two, three, four years is more numbers, more revenues. And I think that's something that uh, you will see uh, in, as the years go by. Yeah, speaking of the revenues, of course, um, you, uh, while signing the deal with Arsenal, the target of Rwanda, of course, through RDB was uh, to reach at least or to double the revenues from the... the, the from About the $400 course. million dollars to $800 to million. Dollars. Yeah. Now, do you think today, one, one year and a half, and of course with uh, uh, some of the you know, positive uh, impact that you can uh, feel on the ground, do you think that uh, target is um, something... Um, Achievable. achievable, definitely. I really believe it's, uh, it's, achi it's achievable. If you look at uh, even the gorilla tourism that we are promoting, we're getting more revenues today than we got before we increased the gorilla permit prices. And if you look at the numbers that we're attracting, I believe that after three years, when the first phase of our partnership with Arsenal um, is over, you will see that uh, we have made a big improvement from the $400 million dollars. Uh, towards the $800 million, which is the goal in 2024. So I believe it's achievable, and I believe uh, that the investments we're making in the resources with Arsenal and PSG are going to play a very big role in getting us there. When you signed this, uh, the deal with Arsenal again, uh, you know, there, so much has been said. Uh, Rwanda dreams bigger than its, its size. So Now, w what do you think will be uh, the... the, the the critics or maybe the, 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 the reactions of people outside there, from Arsenal to Paris Saint-Germain, that's too big, player. Mm -hmm. That's yes. too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, for, for Rwanda to invest in PSG and in Arsenal might sound like a big ambition. Yeah. But quite frankly, mm -hmm. for, for Rwanda to get to where it is today well, would never have been possible if we, if we didn't have big dreams and if we didn't have big ambitions. And we also know that anyone who has made a real big impact anywhere in the world had to make some very bold decisions. Yeah. And we find this big and bold, but we also find that that's the right way to make big and bold results. You really have to think and invest in a bold and big manner as well. So yes, I'm sure the reaction will be uh, you know, a, a lot of um, excitement, a lot of um, emotions about Rwanda's decisions. But let's just remember we're investing in the future. We're investing in uh, the future of tourism growing the future um, industries, whether it's tea and coffee or fashion, culture, art, we are bringing opportunities for the private sector of Rwanda to tap into this platform with PSG to reach the, the rest of, of the world. What that means is that Rwanda's products will be even more competitive because of this exposure. What it means is that more jobs are going to be created because we're promoting industries that give jobs. So it is just investing in the future. Now, uh, when you talk about uh, Arsenal or PSG, the two are football clubs. Now, uh, someone who uh, is in, the, uh, in this sector here in Rwanda, I mean in football industry or sport industry, uh, we, we would like to know, are there some other benefits um, for our football industry here or our sport industry here will get from uh, that new deal? Because with Arsenal, we have seen um, some specific programs with uh, you know, uh, coaches from London or from, 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 from Arsenal who come time to time here to help our coaches and uh, young, young, young players to uh, maybe to, to do well and maybe to organize more our football. Uh, is there something like similar uh, with the PSG? Yes, so for both um, Arsenal and PSG, football development is a key part of the partnership. Uh, specifically for PSG, we have uh, agreed on a specific revamping of uh, football development in the country. We ha we're going to work on a certain number every year, and we're going to work on availing um, the facilities to enable good training of football 
uh, young football developers. And I hope that we can soon have Rwandan kids who grow and become competitive in football globally. If that happens, that is one of the objectives uh, of this goal. But yes, this partnership is also about football development. But as I said, it's beyond football development. It's promoting the industries of Rwanda and also promoting the brand of Rwanda, which, is, which has been clear in what we've done with the Arsenal. Uh, you may have seen in the news that uh, our partnership got an award as uh, one of the most unique and transformational uh, partnerships between Rwanda and, and Arsenal. And so that, those awards, as well as the awards that we got from Australia, Australia which looked at Rwanda, one of the most unique luxury destinations for tourism. All these are happening because the brand is known, the brand is appreciated, and we work also very hard that when tourists come to, the Rwanda, to Rwanda, their experience in the country lives up to that standard. Yeah. Now, uh, do, do you, are we um, expecting uh, something um, else coming uh, uh, after this? Because, uh, or oh, are we now have to be there and say we have to be um, waiting for big, big, big news from RDB? Well, uh, the big news today no is more PSG. <laughs> <laughs> the big news today is PSG, but we'll continue to do tourism promotion like we've been doing, trade fairs all because over we, the world. Because we wonder, after Arsenal, after PSG, what next now? There's also EWT selling, EWTP selling tourism on, on Chinese uh, Alibaba platform. That was also big. There was the Royal Tour, which is a documentary about visiting Rwanda. So we are investing in tourism in several aspects, including traditional aspects of uh, marketing and attending trade fairs for tourism. We bring two operators on fami fami familiarization trips to come and experience our tourism offerings. So we shall continue investing. But today's news is PSG. Now, uh, you know, for ordinary citizens, whenever they hear big, big, big things like this one, how do do they have to understand in easy words, in easy way, the, the benefits from everything that we are talking about here? How do we sense uh, the benefits on the ground? So first of all, what are we trying to do as a country for our people and as a government? Yeah. We're improving the lives of our people. That is the key thing. To improve the lives of our people, we need to find them decent jobs, number one. Number two, we need to make them productive in making products that are of value to the market. That will make them earn better incomes. So that is really what we're trying to do as a country. This partnership brings Rwandan products to a global level by accessing bigger markets, access, accessing hopefully bigger partnerships in different sectors, so that when they come to the country, not only do those platforms um, buy products from Rwanda and be able to give uh, a sustained uh, uh, pipeline of jobs to the people that are, are producing the products, but also when they come to the country to visit, they, are, they need jobs, people, in different aspects of tourism, whether it's transport or hotels. Or, so we're actually investing in the ability to sustain job creation for Rwandans and productivity of our economy. Yeah, and uh, what about the, 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 the private sector now? You are, every day you are raising the bar very high for them. Are they ready to follow the... Our private sector has come a long way. Today, there are many products made in Rwanda that you'd never have imagined five years or ten years ago. Whether it's fashion, you know, if you look at uh, some of the brands we have, House of Tayo, uh, Sonia Mugavo, Ot Baso, Motions, these are brands that have evolved just the last five years. And they're very competitive. These are very good quality products. And so I believe that uh, um, they're ready to compete globally and to take advantage of these platforms. But I also know that we, together with them, have to keep investing in them even to become more competitive. Okay, Claire, thank you so much for being with us. Welcome. This is Rwanda. This is Rwanda. This is Rwanda. C'est ça, c'est Rwanda.